Hi everyone, it's me. So this week I wanted to talk about, about, God, did that sound really Canadian? Hi everyone, it's me. So this week I wanted to talk about words that are specifically different here in England versus in Canada. So I did two videos on words that are the same but are pronounced differently. So um, like, what's an example? Oh my goodness. Like root versus route. But this time I want to talk about words that are specifically different and that you might come across if you're visiting Canada or visiting England. This edition, because I think I'm going to do a couple of these because there are so many, you guys. I don't, you don't realize how many words are different, but there's so many. So if you end up moving here to England or into Canada, you might find yourself in an office environment. So I thought I would do words that are specifically related to working in an office and things that you might hear. But there are so many different words, so there'll probably be like different parts to this thing. You know, why not? So without further ado, let's go. So the first up, words that are different. Here in England, at the end of a sentence, in terms of punctuation, it is a full stop. So the end of a sentence, full stop. In Canada and in the US, because the language in Canada and the US are so similar, I mean, a lot of this, the examples are for both countries. I digress. In Canada, the punctuation at the end of a sentence is called a period. So England, full stop. Canada, North America is a period. I realize it's not like a huge deal, um, but I genuinely didn't know what a full stop was. <laughs> it's not something that ever came up in my life before moving to England. If you are like me and you're a Canadian coming to England, like to work or to live or whatever, a lot of times the English people will know what you're trying to say. There's a lot of like Americanized TV and movies and stuff, so like they're exposed to that kind of stuff. They will probably know what you're saying. But it's, you know, it's, it's good to know. When I first moved here and I got my first job, I was working in an office and I asked one of the ladies there for sticky tack. She's like, I don't really know what that is. And so I'm like, okay, it's like, it's kind of like stretchy and sticky and you like put it on the wall and you can like hang stuff. It's kind of like tape, but it's like malleable and it's sticky tack. And she's like, oh, blue tack. So thankfully these are similar enough. They both got tack in the word, right? Tack. But here in England, you're gonna hear most likely blue tack. And in Canada, at least in Ontario, you would hear sticky tack. <laughs> It's dumb, I get it, but when you're trying to explain like what sticky tack is, then suddenly you realize like, yeah, nobody knows what I'm saying. For people who don't know, by the way, like disclaimer, I worked in an office in Kent. So these are the words that I heard in Kent. I'm not sure if there are equivalents up north or if you guys say the same things, but just throwing that out there. Another word change thing that I was surprised about, I made a mistake in pen on a piece of paper and I asked if we had any whiteout. And they're like, I don't know what whiteout is. So I'm like, okay, so it's like, sometimes it comes in liquid form and you like white out what your mistake was, like you white it out. And they're like, oh yeah, Tipex. I'm like, what is Tipex? This one's a little bit trickier because Tipex is like the brand, so people refer to it, as far as I understand, people refer to it as Tipex, but in Canada we call it whiteout because like you are physically whiting out what you've done. I actually found some Tipex, can you guys see? Oh, I gotta do like the, do it like the fashion bloggers do. So Tipex, yeah, it's just liquid whiteout for us Canadians. But that was a tricky one because Tipex is not even close to what it is. It's like the brand, right? It's otherwise called correction fluid, which, you know, that makes sense. But yeah, Tipex is your whiteout. Another thing that I noticed that was really different is the paper sizes. Again, seems really dumb, but when suddenly you're in an office and your boss is like, I need you to print all these out on A4, and then I need you to take these on A3 and use the um, blue tack and put them up on the walls, and suddenly you're like, I have no idea what that means. So I discovered that the paper sizes, the physical paper sizes, and the words used to describe them, like their titles, sizes, I guess, are different in England and in Canada. 
So in Canada, we have letter size, which is just your typical, you know, everyday kind of size of paper, but we call it letter. Here in England, you guys would call that A4. However, it is slightly different sizes. So who knew we have no standard size of paper? But here in England, A4, I think, is slightly skinnier and slightly longer for whatever reason. And then in Canada, ours is like slightly shorter and a little bit fatter. And we call it letter, and you guys call it A4. The same thing with the larger sizes. We have ledger, which I don't know what the sizing is. It's like, you know, the bigger thing? You know, you know what I'm saying. In Canada, we call that ledger. Here in England, you guys would call that A3. And I don't know if they're the same sizes because I literally could not be bothered to check. But all I know is they're called two different things. So if you are a Canadian coming over here to England, just be aware your A4 is your like run of the mill kind of paper. Your A3 is the big stuff. Letter and ledger does not exist. That's all. Another thing I noticed, so I bought this binder. Uh, from Staples, which they do have Staples in England, which is, you know, shout out Staples, you're lovely. Two things. Um, a lot of the binders I find here in England are just two rings. Um, a lot of times in Canada, or at least again, Ontario, we have three rings, three ring binders. That's like the standard size. You guys got two rings. Again, doesn't really matter, but I didn't know how to open these. <laughs> so... For all my Ontaritonians, that's hard to say, or Canadians, you know what I'm saying. Our binders have three rings in the middle and usually when you want to open them, you literally just grab them and you pull them like open and it just like pops and it's right down the middle so you can put paper like on either side and then you just pop them back in. That's it. You literally just pry them open for the most part. Obviously not all binders are the same. Please don't yell at me. So when I... Um, I had a binder um, here in England and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to open it. So I, as a Canadian, just thought, well, I'll just pull it, right? Like that's what ours are. And I pulled it and I broke it. <laughs> so now you know. Um, obviously now I figured it out. So you, you, if you have one of these like paper presser thingies, you gotta unlock that and move that out of the way. And then it's got like this little lever that you pop open. The thing that bugs me is you can only really put paper on the one side because the lever is in the way. So then you have to like close it, move things, re-pop it, put stuff in. But again, it seems so dumb to be talking about this, but I literally broke a binder because I didn't know what I was doing. And now you know. Don't tell anyone. But yeah, that's my uh, education on uh, binders. Now, one of the last things that I found was different was what you would call something like this. Now this is like a pretty one. It's got a picture on it. My mom bought it for me. It's just a thingy. Um, but it's got these pegs on the inside and little flaps. Um, my mom typed out recipes. That's She literally just sent me recipes. And you've got the pages in like that. So all my English people, what would you call this? Because in Canada, we call this a duotang. And apparently, People here in England did not know what that was. So again, I was at work at the office and I asked somebody for a duotang so I could keep papers in it. And they are like, I literally have no idea what word you just said. So for us Canadians, and again, maybe this is an Ontario thing, this would be a duotang. So it's like um, a papery kind of cover and you've got these metal teeth that you use to put papers on and then you like fold them out and they usually have like a fold in the front and the back to put sheets and then just kind of like a cheap thinner binder but we call these duo tanks i don't know what you guys call these in england and i'd love to know what that is so those are some of the word differences i noticed since working here in england in an office and having worked in an office back in canada they do sound really dumb and it's like, why would you ever need to know this? But you don't realize how important language is until you are at work and your boss is telling you to do something and you literally have no idea what they're saying. But if you guys can think of any other words specifically at an office that are different from Canada and England, I'd love to know. Please leave them in the comments. 
I'm probably gonna do a couple more of these because there's so many word differences. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye. Listen, listen, listen.